So what exactly is real life? And is what you think real life is the way that everybody's ought to be? Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm sharing a few musings on this idea that perhaps when you live on a boat and you cruise, that somehow that's not real life. Because, spoiler alert, there's an awful lot of reality to it in so many different ways. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a garden hose? A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky? Yes, please. Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more. Use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. Somebody came to me the other day and said, don't you miss real life? As if somehow our life on board is fake. And I don't think that that's how they meant it. I think that probably the feeling behind that question is likely based in a little bit of envy, maybe a bit of myth. My joke, which isn't very much of a joke, is that cruising is a lot more than just beaches and umbrella drinks. But I think that for a lot of people, that's what they think it is. My life on a boat must be all perfect and sunshine. One big long vacation that's far away from a 95 office existence or toddler wrangling or traffic. Real life is what everyone else does, right? Maybe it's more that Real life somehow is what you live, and what everybody else does is somehow not real. Let me give you a little bit of a snapshot of yesterday's day in my fake life living on a boat. I stood back in the main salon, waiting for Jeremy to be done digging into the fridge. Because in our small boat, there's no real way for two people to be in the galley simultaneously, so it's just easier to wait. I was looking at the clutter in the galley, the dishes everywhere, the stovetop that needed cleaning. He scooted himself into the cockpit, kind of hunched over against the rain and drizzle. It's been drizzling for four days, which is not a whole lot of fun. And I shifted to doing the dishes. Partway through, the faucet started sputtering. Of course, we're out of water. So I wiped the suds off my hands, hooked the ladder up into place overhead, picked up the floorboard and switched the tanks and mentally added fill water to tomorrow's to-do list. When the dishes were done and doing their air dry thing, I made my way up the ladder to the cockpit, down the ladder to the ground, grabbed the bucket that has a handle because for some reason the bucket that is our slop bucket that catches all the sink water, we've set that up as one that doesn't have a handle and emptied the slop bucket into the bucket that has a handle and carried that one to the land facilities. Because it's been raining so much, actually, the slop bucket had an awful lot of rainwater in it and was pretty close to overflowing, so it took two trips to fully empty the slop bucket. Of course, as I walk into the bathroom to dump it into the head, I have to use kind of mincing little feet movements because I don't want to slip on the tile floor. And then after I'd finished doing the slop bucket, the day started. Phone calls to the insurance company, trying to wrap up a recent claim on a car. Dealing with finances, making sure we've got enough money in there to cover the credit card bill, which of course is a whopper because we're doing boatyard stuff. Phone calls to propane companies, trying to find one that will recertify our aluminum tanks that we have for mischief. We've got old style horizontal ones and First of all, finding a propane company that's going to actually recertify tanks that are supposed to be able to be recertified if they pass certification. But finding a company that will do it, that's challenging. Finding a company that knows how to deal with a horizontal tank is a whole nother level. I took a break to write a blog post. I posted on Facebook looking for a propane place. And one of the people on the on the group was really helpful and said, oh, well, why don't you call all the propane filler places because they should recertify. I was like, cool, thanks. I'm glad you're trying to help, but give me some real life examples of a place that you've actually had your tank recertified to help me narrow it down. 
I took a break to make lunch. Back to the phone call marathon. This time armed with some Facebook generated intel. Ooh, maybe this place will do it. I called them. Ooh, yep. No, they'd have no idea what to do with those horizontal tanks. Oh, wait, you have the regulations that you've printed out? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Why don't you come drive an hour and a half, drop the tanks off, and, and I'll find out if we can do it or not. Okay, here's another spot. And this person said they actually had horizontal tanks recertified. I call the spot. They know what I'm talking about. They say they'll do it. Yes, it was an hour across the bridge to the other side of the bay, but oh, yes, this has been on my list for two weeks. Brilliant. Jeremy, I'm headed over to the Eastern Shore. Do you need me to just take stuff out of the car? I got to get these tanks taken care of. Two and a half hours later, I'm back at the boat with our tanks filled and certified for another five years, which saved us $800 because yes, each tank is $400. I'll take it. So what was your day like? It hits me occasionally, and this is bizarre, how weird it is that other people are living completely different lives. Like somewhere far away from this boatyard, people are involved in toddler wrangling or commuting or farming or worrying about sick family members. All of these so radically distinct existences are going on simultaneously. We talk about time travel and time warp and different universes, but it's our reality right now. There are a million different universes happening right here on our planet. And each one is 100% real for the person living it. It is true that there are pinch me aspects to this live aboard life. The scenery once we're cruising is frequently the stuff of magazine covers. Sparkling water, sandy beaches. Our schedule as retired people is largely free from constraints placed on us from outside. And there also are aspects that nobody ever talks about. Well, unless you're listening to this podcast. That is the dirty, difficult, expensive work associated with any haul out. Whether you've planned that haul out or not. The constant monitoring of weather and recalibrating plans in response to that weather. That isn't how regular life happens, right? Usually you don't have to worry that much about the weather. We have a number of friends who have recently moved to Spain. They were enticed by the lower cost of living, the climate, the general ease of life. And when they come back to the U.S. or Canada to visit, I wonder, do they get asked the same question about real life? My guess is that, yeah, they probably do get asked the same question about real life. Because my bet is that the real life confusion is that so many people have an incredibly tough time understanding any existence outside of their own. It's sad, misguided, short-sighted, selfish, arrogant. I don't know what word you want to use, but all at the same time. When you go on vacation do you ask the people who live in those places where you vacation if they're missing real life? Because it's all real life, all of it. Yours, mine, the people next door, the people living in countries on the other side of the world. My life is real when I'm snorkeling in gorgeous clear water, and it's real when I'm walking a mile to the laundromat with my bag of smelly, damp clothes over my shoulder. My life is real when I'm driving on the New Jersey Turnpike or talking to the kids on the phone or making new counters in the house in Vermont. Just because your real life includes other things than mine doesn't mean that it's the only version of real that there is, right? One of my favorite TV shows, not that I watch a lot of TV, is Ted Lasso. And if you haven't seen it, it's worth a subscription to Apple Plus, Apple TV, whatever it is, just to be able to binge Ted Lasso, in my opinion. It's a generous, provocatively curious show that generally focuses on the good in human nature. And one of the things he talks about in one of the early episodes, as he's talking to the evil dude in the whole show, Rupert. He says, be curious, not judgmental. And what a great 
way to look at the world, to be curious, not judgmental, not to dismiss somebody else's life as not real somehow, but to be curious about what their real life involves. What wonderful, wonderful conversations we can have and learn about each other if we are curious and not judgmental. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you when I can hear about some aspects of your real life and be curious about what makes you tick as we get to toast to this incredible lifestyle we get to live. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. This is a little more cerebral of one than normal. We love it when we hear from our listeners. We love it when you come up to us at the Annapolis Boat Show or take a class from us at Cruisers U and be curious and not judgmental. And we can be the same for you. The Boat Galley is all about making boat life better. And we certainly hope we've made it better for you today. Have the most spectacular week. Mm-hmm.